A lot of people have questions about figuring out how much ejection charge to use on a dual deployment rocket. That's what I'm going to cover in this episode. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today we're going to talk about figuring out how much ejection charge or black powder you'll need to fire off a dual deployment rocket to push the main parachute out. So we're going to start out with the rocket. So here we have a rocket and then in the bottom we're going to use the ejection charge to separate the bottom part of the rocket which has the drogue chute in it and then we put the main parachute in the top and it's going to be controlled by electronics that are going to fire off an ejection charge to push the nose off. And that's what brings your rocket back into dual deployment. That, that part you know. Okay, so now how much black powder do you need to fire off that nose cone and make sure it comes out? Well, first you need to know the internal volume inside the tube that you're going to try to pressurize. Now on this rocket here, I have a tube, it's a four inch diameter tube, which means if you go on the Apogee website, and if you look at four inches in diameter tubes, you're looking for the inside diameter. And the inside diameter is 3.9 inches. And okay, and then on this tube, this is 18 inches long here. You can see my tube is 18 inches long. So you're gonna take the diameter times itself, so, well, the equation for the volume that you're trying to pressurize is um, the area of the inside of the tube, and remember we said the inside of the tube is 3.9 inches in diameter, and so you get the, to get the area, you multiply it, uh, the equation is pi divided by four times the diameter squared, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. And then you multiply that number times the length of the tube that you're trying to pressurize. Now this tube, we're not pressurizing the full 18 inches because on the nose cone, we have a four inch long shoulder right here. And then on the bottom section, we also have a four inch long shoulder on the front of the eBay. So basically 18 inches minus four inches here, minus four inches on the back, so basically, we're only pressurizing 10 inches of length inside the tube. So when we multiply, when we figure out the volume, we want to multiply 10, which is that length, times pi divided by 4 times the diameter squared. That's the equation. Um, so I'll come back to that because we're going we're gonna to do some math, and this requires math. Um, and then, um, well, first let's talk about the black powder because everybody always asks, where do you get the black powder and what kind do you get? Well, black powder comes in four different varieties and basically it's four sizes of the grains. So you have a, a very coarse grain, a medium, a super medium, and a really fine grain. Um, and the, and they, they label them by the number of Fs. So it'll be called 4F is the smallest. Um, this is an Aerotech um, from a reload from an Aerotech kit. And I'm going to weigh out how much black powder is in here. Um, so here on my scale, you can see it's now at zero. And I'm going to open up the little container and pour it out into the little cup. And we'll see how much this weighs. And you can see it, it has the consistency of like pepper. And I have 0.68 grams of black powder here in this cup. And I think this might have been from a 24 millimeter reload kit. Um, and I'll, I'll show you here in a minute where you can find out the weights of the black powder in the other sizes of rocket motors. So now where do you buy 4F black powder like this? Well, you can buy it locally we can't ship it because it's an explosive, but you can buy it locally from a gun store, but you can't do it from any gun store. It has to be a gun store that specializes in muzzle loading guns. 
So these are the people that recreate scenes from the like the Civil War or the American Revolution. These are these are muzzle loading. So you want to go to a gun store that specializes in muzzle loading. So just search that in your town and you'll find somebody close or a gun store will recommend you to somebody else and they carry the black powder and you can buy it there and they'll sell it in one pound increments and that's what you can legally own without having an explosives permit that's like written into law by congress so you don't have to worry about buying it but we can't ship it to you because there's even more regulations on shipping so i'm going to come back in just a second and we're going to bring out our calculators and our computers and actually figure out how much we need to pressurize the internal volume of a rocket Okay, we're back. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you where on the Apogee website you can find out how much black powder is in each of the composite rocket motors. So you can go to any of the composite motor pages on our website. And here I have loaded uh, a G77R4. Um, this is an Aerotech one. And you just come down here to this bar that says frequently asked questions. And you just click on that and it will bring you down to the frequently asked questions. And if you scroll through these frequently asked questions, you will find one question that says, how much black powder is in an ejection charge? And here we have all the Cesaroni motors and the Aerotech motors. And remember the one that I just measured was about 0.68 grams, which was pretty close to this one right here. So that's a 24 or a 29 millimeter single use will have about 0.7 grams in it. Um, so that's where you find the, you know, the amount of black powder that's in a current ejection charge. But if you're making your own ejection charge, now we need to go to what is called an ejection charge calculator. And basically you can, um, well, actually we have one, a link to one here on our website, just right below that other question of how much black powder is in an ejection charge. Um, you can find one, will the ejection charge in my motor be sufficient to separate the rocket? And it will point you to a ejection charge calculator. And there's many websites that have these calculators on it. And I downloaded one that was actually in Excel spreadsheet. Um, now I've gone ahead and entered the diameter of the tube. Remember we're, we're we're pressurizing an internal volume of the rocket here. So we know the diameter is 3.9 inches, and that's the inside diameter of the tube, not the outside, but the inside. And we know the length we're trying to pressurize is 10 inches. Okay, so now we need to figure out what is the desired pressure that we need to use. Now, in general, uh, the rule of thumb is anywhere between 10 and 15 PSI. And right here I got 15 PSI, but I'm gonna back that down to 10. I think this number is actually overkill because what this number represents is the amount of force necessary to overcome the friction force on the nose cone. So you have to overcome that friction to get it out. And once it's out, you know, the parachute's gonna pull itself out because the rocket's moving in flight and it's going to come out. Uh, so basically, you just have to get the nose separated. You don't need to extend it to the fullest length of the shock cord. In fact, you don't want to because that puts extra stress on both ends of the shock cords, uh, on each of the anchors. And if one of them is not stronger than the other, that one's going to break. So you just want to get it out and then just let gravity and drag do the rest of the work. Um, so even 10 PSI, I think it's overkill. But now, um, if we enter 10 PSI and hit tab, it will tell you, you know, the ejection charge calculator, it will tell you how much, eject, how much black powder we're gonna need to separate the rocket. And in this case, 0.62 grams. So that's really all you need to know. That's how simple an ejection charge calculator is to use. Now, where it gets more complex is if you're using shear pins on your rocket in addition to you know, the friction of the nose cone. So 
now we got to do a little bit more math. Uh, so we're going to go to the Apogee website again, and we're going to go to the shear pins. And we sell two different varieties of shear pins. We sell a small and a bigger one. And I'm looking at the small shear pins right here on my screen. And I'm going to scroll down on this page, and it says using shear pins, calculating the amount of the black powder ejection charge. And it gives us a number. So according to an archive of rocketmaterials.org, three shear pins require a force of 64.24 pounds to, to shear them in half so that the nose cone will come off. And when you do this, you also need to calculate or add in the amount of friction force holding the nose on. So it's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to do a little bit of math here. Um, first, I need to calculate, I'm going to bring up a calculator. Let me clear this out. I need to calculate the diameter or the area of the inside of the tube. So remember, the area was the equation pi divided by 4 times the diameter squared. So our diameter is 3.9 inches, and we're going to square that number. We're going to multiply it times pi, and then we're going to divide by 4. And that gives us an area inside the tube of almost 12 inch square inches, but 11.94 inches squared. Um, now, we're going to multiply that times, remember we said we need over here in our ejection charge calculator, uh, a desired pressure of 10 pounds per square inch. So you're, if you're looking at the back of, you know, like the shoulder on the nose cone, this right here is 11.94 square inches multiplied times 10 pounds per square inch. And that gives you, let me bring the calculator back up times 10 pounds per square inch, we're going to have a total force pushing on this nose cone of 119 pounds. So when the ejection charge goes off without shear pins, we're going to get 119 pounds of force pushing it out. So that's why I say 10 PSI is probably overkill. Because imagine taking your rocket, putting the tube on it, and dropping a weight of 119 pounds on it. Is it going to push the nose off? Yes. Is, can it be pushed off with less pressure or, or with less weight? Yes, it can. But people in general use 10 pounds per square inch, where in this case is going to give us 119 pounds of force pushing on it. But we also need an additional 64 pounds of force to shear those shear pins that are going to be through the wall of this nose cone. So I'm going to add to that, let me get the exact number here, it was 64.24. And let me go back to my calculator. Okay, so we're going to add plus 64.24 pounds. It gives us a total of 183 pounds of force that we need to get the nose off and cut those shear pins. Uh, now I'm going to back out the diameter or our area, so I'm going to divide it by the area of the base of the nose cone. Remember that was um, uh, 11.94 square inches, and that gonna, gives us 15.37 pounds of force that we need to pressurize to push the nose off. So remember, 15.37. We're going to go back to our black, par black powder ejection charge calculator, and we're going to put in that number of 15.377. Oops, wrong, wrong place. That was right here, the desired pressure, 15.377 PSI. Hit the tab key, and it tells us we need 0.95 grams of black powder to separate the nose cone of the rocket. So that is how you calculate the amount of black powder that you need to push the nose cone off of your rocket. Now I think this is a little bit overkill, so um, use, so basically what you need to do is to confirm this, and you need to do an ejection charge 
test on the ground. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put your black powder ejection charge inside of your rocket, just a little container full of the amount of black powder that you calculated, put an igniter in it, run the wires out the end of the rocket or out the side through the vent hole to a launch controller, just a simple launch controller. Remember to cap off the motor, if you're, if you're pressurizing the back end, cap this off so that the pressure remains in there. I've seen people do ejection charge tests with no motor in there and then the gas just comes out the back and it doesn't, doesn't pressurize the inside. So remember, make sure everything is like you would have it in flight and then set off the ejection charge. It's gonna pressurize this and you do it horizontally on the ground and the nose cone's gonna come, come off and it's gonna go skidding across the ground. So you might wanna have a big blanket so you're not scuffing up your nose cone as it scuttles across the ground. And remember, we just get, need to get the nose cone off. We don't need to extend it out to the full length of the shock cord because that's like too much. So just get it, it just goes poof. You know, that's good enough. That's plenty good enough. Okay, and if that happens, then you know you have the correct amount of black powder for your flight. So this was kind of a long-winded explanation because a lot of people are confused about this and I wanted to take the time to do it right. So if you have questions um, here on YouTube, you can leave them in the comments section and we'll try to answer them there. Um, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button so that you will get notified when we release new videos. And, and there's a little, um, little bell and that will tell Google to send you an email when we release a new video. So my name again is Tim Van Milligan. You've been watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.